afternoon, everyone. I hope everybody can hear me. If not, I can turn up the volume. Okay, yeah? Okay, can you hear me all right? Anyway, let's see over here. Okay. Reagan, that was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. As I said, I, there's no way that I can properly all of the marvelous things about Larry Malenkin. But I will say he has been very good to me and to my family ever since I knew him. It was because stands at the corner of Judson, uh, at the corner of Genesee and Atherton Road today. It is because of his sacrifice. I do want to remember that I was uh, at the funeral of Sid Warren, where Larry Malenkin was paying tribute, and he said that Doc Adams and one other person, along with Sid Warren, put their houses up as collateral in order to secure a loan for the sanctuary which is now Judson Baptist Church. Well he said that there was one other person but he never said who. Well that piqued my curiosity because I pastor the church and had not heard that story before. So I started investigating and of course just as I thought the third person was Larry Malenkin. 
So it is a marvelous thing. When you fall in love with Jesus to the point where your greatest ambition in life is to please the Lord and to live for Him and to live for this day. I want to say today, you as the family of Larry Malenkin have been given an extraordinary gift. You have been given a, a marvelous If you are privileged with being a child or grandchild or great-grandchild of this man, I want you to know that you have been given something that you should cherish very, very greatly. Because of the way this man lived, because of the sacrifices he made for kingdom purposes, and for many of you, I want to say that your life is to be marked with incredible blessing and marvelous favor. You should expect that as you walk through life, because of how this man lived, your life will be marked with blessing and favor two things come to mind first of all this man because of how he lived was a blessing to god and god does not forget those things if we do a careful search of scripture we see that another man pleased god his name was king david he had a son solomon the son of the mistake Bathsheba. He was the son chosen to be the next in line. Although there were older siblings, he was chosen. And there's a whole lot in that. But suffice it to say, Solomon had a marvelous start and a miserable finish. And God was dealing with Solomon at the end of his reign. And he said, because of the things that you have done that have been wicked, I'm going to take the kingdom and I'm going to split it in two. But I'm not going to do it during your lifetime because I am honoring your father, King David, and the way that he walked before me. If you do a careful a look in scripture you'll see that King David is the measure against every other king that came after him he was righteous and followed in the ways of his father David or he didn't follow in the ways of his father David let me say to you today although your life is to be marked with blessing expect it because it will be there because your life will have favor let me say there's a second thing this man and this woman have prayed for you. i'm told every morning as part of their ritual i, I have a memory of being told i don't think i'm making this up that what they would do is they would always pause to remember their children in prayer before the Lord and their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren. That is a marvelous heritage to fall under. You should expect that because of their life honoring God, He will answer that prayer. And you are. favor. Now, does that mean that your decisions don't matter? On the contrary, they really do matter. But you have what almost no one else has. You're in their downline. What a blessing that is. I've been asked by a family member to say this next part. Larry Malenkin lived for God and it is there's no question where he is right now. He is with God. He is experiencing a reality we can't even imagine how good it is. But it's great. 
I've been asked to say, if you want to see him again, it will require that your sin be washed by the same blood of Jesus that his sin was. That man is in heaven not because of all the great things he did, but because Jesus cleansed his sin. I remember hearing the story how a pastor Unger had come to his house and they took care of their business with God and he's been faithful to that ever since. I want you to know that is the single most important thing in life. Don't miss your opportunity to experience the same joy, the same gratitude, the same outlook on life. You know what I'm talking about. This man didn't have a perfect life, but he always found joy. He was always thankful. Even when things did not go his way, he was a faithful man to turn his life over to the care of God. And when God's holding it for you, the burden is absolutely lighter. I think it's important to have lines drawn in the sand. It's, it has to be greater than a passing thought. There has to be shift and change. Today can be a day where you can say, I do want to come under that blessing. Well, you're already there if you're family. Under the blessing. But I want to walk in a greater fullness. I want to live like Grandpa did. Or like Dad did. I want that. And the way to that is peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a simple thing, really. No sin is too great that it can't be cleansed. No mistake is so big. God cleanses them all, but for the asking. He cleanses our sin and makes us whiter than snow. Well, we are 10 minutes, 12 minutes into this. And I'm going to be on time, so I'm going to turn it over to Cliff. And he's going to say for us. I always told Larry that he was my most favorite guy. He always made me promise that I would sing the old Oregon Cross. I'm going to try that again today. A kind of a funny story about that several years ago. Turn it up. Turn it up. Turn it up. Several years ago, the church was there. And during the service, she asked me to come up and sing a verse of the old rugged cross. So I get up there, and you know, the old rugged cross is on a hill far away. The old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. What I said, on a hill far away, stood an old rugged cross for the deer and the antelope. <laughs> and we have it on video. My daughter says she's going to play that at my feet. Cherish the 
old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. I'll exchange it someday for a Thank you, Cliff. I'd like to read some scripture. Jesus said, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. In the book of Revelation, chapter 14, we read, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. In 2 Timothy, the Apostle Paul was writing uh, to his spiritual son, Timothy, saying, I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Revelation chapter 1. We read, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore and have the keys of hell and of death. Finally, in John's Gospel, chapter 11, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. So we know that Larry is with Jesus this very moment. We can only try to imagine how marvelous that union is. Um, the Bible says that uh, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man that which is laid up for those who love God. Let us pray. Father, thank you again for a great man. Thank you for allowing him to be in our lives. Thank you for the mentor that he has been to so many. Thank you that he was a selfless person. Thank you, God, that he was a cheerful uh, example following you. Thank you, God, for that marvelous marriage that he and Chris had, and how even uh, those that I've spoken to mention how that's been such an encouragement to them. Father, I just praise you, um, and I, I thank you. Again, I ask for special comfort on this family today. Wrap your arms around them. Let them sense your love in such a deep and personal way, I pray. Oh God, that they would experience that same joy and that wonderful uh, knowledge, that wonderful experience of knowing that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And now as our Savior Christ taught us to pray, let's repeat together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us.
God bless you.